Amanda, do you think that Kevin Sr. had sound logic in Crazy White Fellow Thinking? No, but he's never really had sound logic before. So it, it's nice to see him. I forgot he was an international assassin. That was one of those things when I saw the last time on Leftovers. I was like, oh, yeah, he was in there. But uh, it's interesting to see the ramifications by the end of it of trying to burn this book or throwing it out and uh, Lindsay Duncan's character taking it as gospel. So clearly he's now responsible for this fanatic killing <laughs> of this poor, poor cop. But I don't think it's going to do much for the Australian tourism board that like the first <laughs> like two days he's in Australia, he's like, yeah, I figured I always wanted to see the opera house. And then I ended up in a two week drug high. I, I don't know what he did acid trip or something. So that was uh, interesting. Yeah, he was telling that seven page story and he just went from one thing to the next and nothing really connected any of the points that he was making. But uh, eventually he got to the end of it and he's like, and here I am. So it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I agreed. I really thought the, ep the episode title was so appropriate because you he was just crazy white fella thinking that was ridiculous to to make those jumps and to draw those conclusions to get from where he was to where he ended up was so kind of ridiculous and put a really big smile on my face as i was watching it play out but this it's just so typical of kevin senior he is a complete nutter and we that's why we love him i like how uh like maybe later directing it she was clearly fascinated with his face, you know, for a good reason. So you can see like every wrinkle in every shot. And he's got much longer hair this season, so he's more disheveled. Uh, I did like also seeing how he looked on October 14th, because we don't often go back to that point. And uh, seeing it from a new perspective as well, he's been barely in the first couple seasons. I read that uh, Damon Lindelof said that when they're coming up with this episode, they toyed with the idea of making it all about Lindsay Duncan, showing her perspective, kind of like a linear approach from the departure up to the present day, and then kind of ending with her finding Kevin Sr., but they ultimately did it the other way around. But she was great, you know, in those uh, last 10 minutes where she's giving that speech, and HBO is submitting her for supporting actress. Well, she's an HBO veteran. She was on Rome. She was in uh, that television film. I, I can't remember it. Hold on, I'm looking at the name. <laughs> trying to find the name of it. It's just all of a sudden. Blank. I can't yeah. remember either. Longford, that's, that's the one. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she was in that. I, I mean, she's, she's been in a few HBO projects, so it, yeah. it would make sense why they would at least submit her for that. Mm. She's very, very, very good in this episode, and um, <clears throat> and she's like a legend here in, in Australia. She's like she's not like a, a big celebrity, but people know her from all of her work over the years. And I'm so glad she's getting this a, another showcase like this on American television because she, she was dynamite in this episode. Really good. Yeah, and the last time we saw her was in Birdman. Probably is what most people remember her most recently for. Here just to like, so people are like, who is she? She looks so funny. Should I yeah. look her up on IMDb? She was in Birdman, that's, that's what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now what about, do you think that Scott Glenn has a chance or does Lindsay Duncan for this episode mm. at the Emmys? <clears throat> well, I think um, it's very hard to say this about anyone from The Leftovers. We have to always make that qualification because The Leftovers has been unfortunately very, very much a big uh, failure at the Emmys. Um, it's, there's no easy way to say that. But if let's just pretend that it was an Emmy show. I would be really thinking very uh, carefully about putting Scott Glenn in there because this was such a showcase for him. He must have been absolutely delighted when he got the script for this episode and was able to play this complete crazy guy traipsing across this huge ancient continent. And I, I think he would be actually would be a contender. I really do. It's such a showcase. What do you think? I think he would be, but I'm holding off on that because I would prefer it to be Christopher Eccleston just because he's delivered so steadily for, for two seasons plus. 
and I know his episode's coming. That, that's, <laughs> that's the thing, is that it, it, I will be really, really mad if we get through the whole season, the last season of The Leftovers, and we don't have one more moving showcase for him. So this might be one of those we, we go back and we're like, oh, yeah, he was really great. But he might be more of an afterthought by the end of it. But if he could, yeah, it would be, it would be amazing. Yeah, I think I agree with you too. I think maybe where we could see this episode pop up is in cinematography, because uh, that is a category where they are supposedly watching tapes and then judging based off of those entirely. So we do see random nominations every so often, like last year when Bates Motel got in after being snubbed for all previous seasons. Mm. Uh, so this was a very visual episode. And I suppose maybe later we'll be submitting the finale instead. And Rob, you had previously said that, you know, the HBO is going to be making a big push for her. Can you uh, speak more to that? Yeah, so they did. I know they really pushed for her in season two and were most likely quite disappointed when she didn't um, get the nomination that she well deserves. She's not just a uh, director for hire on this show, as the three of us know. You know, she's an executive producer and she, um, she really ran the show down in Australia. Um, she's the one that kind of took the production to Melbourne and Victoria. And um, so she has a very big part to play in, in the look and in the scope of the show. And so she directed this episode and I'm sure she's going to direct the finale. Do you know that whether she is or not for sure, yes, Riley? Yeah. Okay, I haven't checked that in the last couple of weeks. Um, and, I, and I know for a fact that HBO are now once again going to really try very hard. They're not expecting hundreds of nominations for The Leftovers, but they're hoping that maybe uh, Mimi Leader and perhaps, um, you know, Justin Thoreau and a couple of the actors like Carrie Coon might be able to break through. And hopefully maybe even for D Damon Lindelof, there's an episode coming up, which I'll say zero about, but um, that would be the one that he would submit. And um, yeah, wouldn't it be wonderful to see them finally get something for their final season? And remember House of Cars has not had a writing or a directing nomination in a couple of years. So it is possible for a passion vote to get it to get it into one of those categories. Hmm. And HBO does have an odd history of being able to sneak shows into the best drama series race that haven't really been on Emmy's radars. They were able to get True Blood in. They've been able to get Big Love in. Rowan, Wasn't for their final cool. season, but on that one-off hmm. series nod, that was the only nomination True Blood received that year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they were still able to do it. So it, it's one of those things where they might be able to push it in. Now, Rob, this is hard because you said that you're not going to say anything about it, but you don't think that Damon Lindelof will just go with the finale instead as his writing submission? Well, he may, but um, I mean, that's the only episode that I haven't seen. And I, um, I've been pestering our friends over at HBO about that, and they tell me that the episode will be released the week before. Oh, great. Um, so we'll be able to see it the week before it is. Um, and I, I was listening to um, a really great uh, podcast that Damon Lindelof did. And, and, you know, there was some debate about whether they gave out all eight or seven or four or whatever episodes. And um, so I, I have seen, obviously, if it's not the finale, it'll be this other episode, which you'll understand when you see it. And... Um, yeah, wouldn't I just think it would, uh, it would be a crime for Damon Lindelof not to get some recognition for this show. Um, I'm such a huge fan of his work over the years. Um, and he got quite a lot of traction with Lost um, at the Academy. And unfortunately, he just seems to m be missing out for the leftovers. And that's, that makes me sad. Yeah, the finale of Lost, uh, as divisive as it was, is the second most nominated drama episode in Emmy history. So, yes. Yeah. He hasn't always struggled uh, as he is now. Uh, I noticed a number of similarities uh, with this episode and Lost, like when, you know, Kevin Sr. and Lindsay Duncan are talking at the end, and then he says, like, oh, well, my name is, and then she just cuts him off because whatever she's saying she thinks is more important. You know, <laughs> that classic uh, not sharing information when it was very easy. And then also when uh, we had seen him in the previous episode, up at the end so then we just assume that um you know he knows everything since he was somewhere where we weren't expecting him to and then in this episode we see it uh see the story from his perspective and really he only arrived there like a moment before the rest of the characters so he actually knows nothing 
which was also <laughs> the case with lots I found where nobody actually knew anything. So mm. that was fun. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Um, I, I just wanted to comment about the the episode for me when I think about it. What um, I was most happy with the with apart from the storyline, just from my personal perspective, it really was a beautiful. It beautifully evoked that part of this country and. Um, and for anyone who hasn't been here, it really, it was very authentic in the way, in the way that it depicted um, rural Australia or what you in America would call the outback. We don't really call it that much um, and, uh, in regional Australia. And also um, there was a lot of really great indigenous Australians uh, in this episode and they don't really, um, a lot of our indigenous Australian actors don't get a lot of work, you know, they, there's not a lot of, um, stories about Aboriginal people. It's so great to be able to see their culture on show um, on an international stage. I was so, so excited about that. Yeah, we finally spent a whole episode in Australia, even though most of our main characters are not still there. <laughs> it reminds me of that, remember that last season of Curb Your Enthusiasm where all the promotions were about like, Larry goes to New York, but he didn't actually get there until episode six? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And yeah. I know we're trying to go like an episode without talking about the music, but oh my god! Oh my god, the music, man, <laughs> far out. I'm, I'm, I know. Overdoing, they did. They're doing such a beautiful job of that. Yeah, it was yeah. a beautiful episode. Yeah. Did you guys think that when Kevin Senior was looking through the photo album that the people outside were the kids in the pictures? Am I the only one? That never occurred to me. Yeah, me neither. There you go. So imaginative. <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> I like it. So what else? What like what what was what was the, what will you take away from this episode? As did anything make it clearer for you? Or do you think this whole um, song thing is just nonsense? It just there was happen? one thing that I I thought was interesting. He said, which is, is I don't want him in Australia which makes me very worried for what's going to happen, but at least that might turn up the drama a little bit. He, he was very clear about not wanting his son in Australia. And of course, as we know, he's probably on the plane right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I sure hope Kevin doesn't die, but it's looking like that's gonna happen, I think, with uh, how Nora's alone in the end of the season premiere. But dying in the finale might not be a bad way to try and sneak himself into and Emmy nominee. It worked for Matthew Fox. So. <laughs> Might as well. There's, there's always always talk about Carrie Coon and Christopher Eccleston and Regina King and Liv Tyler and so many wonderful actors. But for me, like Justin Thoreau is so underappreciated for what he does. Like really, he just there's just nothing like his performance on television. I'm so impressed with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a hard episode because we just we basically just got caught up with Kevin Senior and we know Junior's coming and yeah. we're listening to these odd tapes that he had. So it's it, it's going to be interesting once they kind of get back together. Yeah, I try to avoid uh, official trailers because I don't want to see too much. But I did watch the like the teaser trailer for this season, and then I saw all this talk about you know a flood is coming, and I really thought that it would be more than just. Kevin Senior talking about how a flood is coming because of how he used to sing a song about a spider. We'll see. Maybe there's more in the next episode. Yeah. Yeah. 